Okay, um, so this is a quick demo of uh, the marriage between Anami's tilty and twisty, spinny variations of the, our interactive table and the Uniview software for navigating the universe. Um, I'm starting here from a view just outside the boundary of the Oort cloud and zooming into our solar system. Um, you can see as I come closer by twisting the tabletop that our sun starts looming larger. And as we zoom in further, you see a kind of synthesized view of our solar system with the paths of the planets. As we zoom in further still, um, you can see that the view we've selected, or the, the path that we've selected through the universe, uh, focuses on getting us to the third planet, our Earth. Um, and if we zoom in further still, you start seeing that there's the moon's trajectory. Right at the moment, we have the magnetosphere turned on around Earth. Um, these blue magnetic fields. Um, so I zoom in further still. We see the surface of the planet. Before we get there, we see the paths of the satellites. These are the hundred brightest satellites in the sky. Um, and so this will kind of give visitors a sense of how dense the satellite satellites are. As we zoom in further, we find that the dark side of the planet has the Earth at night data set. So you can see the light sources above Europe. There's the Nile. Um, I go over to the lit side of the planet. Um, we see the the current cloud layer, and I can zoom in, kind of go through the cloud layer and see the, the land masses below in more detail. I'm now going to zoom back out and start seeing some of the other phenomena of our solar system and then the galaxy. Um, so I zoom back out you see that the, the constellations have been turned on and we can see the, the patterns of the, cons the constellations from as viewed from Earth. which are better known than others. And one of the things we can do with the software is pop up descriptions of the, uh, the constellations or any other uh, feature of the universe that's visible at any particular layer. One of the fascinating things about the constellations as we zoom back further and further and get further away from our solar system is that they start to warp Obviously, the constellations are from a single point of view at our planet, and here you can see that the constellations are all just a small neighborhood of stars. Um, one of the interesting things to point out to visitors who are using the exhibit is how small that cluster of stars is, um, even within our own galaxy. So all the all the stars that make up our constellations are just a very small portion of, the Milky, of one arm of the Milky Way galaxy. As we zoom back further, our galaxy starts to fade and these other galaxies pull into view. We're moving much, much faster than the speed of light at this point, our virtual trajectory.
And as we zoom back further still, see how many, just how many galaxies there are, the observable ones. And then you also start to see that the galaxies that we know about are arrayed in these two cones. That doesn't mean that there aren't galaxies in these other areas, it just means we can't see them through the arms of the Milky Way galaxy, which is blocking all of our instruments for detecting them. As we move back further still, we get outside the, uh, the observable universe and to the limits of the Big Bang. I'm going to zoom back in now and we're going to kind of retrace our steps. We can change what's visible on the way in and on the way out of the, of the galaxy or of the, you know, of the universe and of our galaxy when we get down to that level. Traveling in pretty quickly. And one of the things we did while we were out there was we changed the focus of our trajectory back. So when we get to our solar system, we're not going to return to Earth. We're actually going to return to Mars. You can see I'm zooming in now. Instead of going to planet number three, we're going back to planet number four. And we'll be able to see some of the results of our mapping efforts of Mars. So this lets visitors to the table look at some of these phenomenal data sets that have been coming back from our explorations of Mars's surface. And again, we'll be able to label particular phenomena and perhaps where, how these data sets were gathered and how high resolution they are, compare them to the planetary ones on Earth. But that's just a flavor of what can be done with uh, this. Um, we're quite excited. And further details can be seen on www.anami.com.